Welcome back everybody. So yeah, it's been like a month since I posted anything up on YouTube and I thought I'd better do a quick catch up video. Mm, might not be that quick to be honest, uh, but just to keep you all updated on what I've been doing this past month. Now, I've got a bit of the brewer's guilt because I've actually brewed twice since I last posted a video up on YouTube and I've not taken any footage of either of the brewing sessions that I did. Uh, the first of which was this beer which I'm drinking now. Now I've just done a day uh, doing the garden, working in the garden and this beer was very much brewed for that kind of purpose so I want it to be nice, low ABV, easy drinking not going to chop my foot off with a lawnmower basically so this beer is coming at 3.9% uh, I did actually have all intentions of doing a brew day from this beer um, but on the day when I was brewing I got everything set up I actually brewed outside which we'll come to ended up being a bit of a nightmare uh, biggest nightmare though I got a migraine pretty much as soon as I'd kind of got my water up to strike temperature uh, I got a migraine I was pretty much struggling to even like read the numbers on my bruiser so making a video kind of yeah that weren't gonna happen um, so yes I brewed it outside it was a lovely sunny day I thought I'll sit outside and brew outside uh, problem with that was the extension lead obviously the cable from the uh, bruiser obviously don't reach far enough for me to come outside so I got it in the extension lead uh, completely unwound it and I was trying to make sure that I kept the uh, percentage on my elements down to a certain level where I thought that'll be fine it'll get me up to boiling temperatures without overeating and hitting the automatic cutout on my extension reel uh, yeah we will find getting up to mash temperatures and things like that um, but then when it came to actually getting up to a boil and things like that it would maybe run for 20 minutes or so before then cutting out and I'm on to maybe wait a couple of minutes resetting the um, the reset button on my extension reel until it cooled down enough to then power up again so it ends up being a bit of a nightmare um, but we did brew beer at the end of it which like I said is this beer here now this has got hops in it which I've never used before uh, I think it came from like a mystery pack I can't remember whether it was the malt miller that I'd ordered from where you can do the mystery hop selection and one that turned up was IH033 which I think now has been renamed to like uh, Lorien or something like that um, but they're pretty much it's the same people who did Strata Hops which if you've been watching my channel you'll know that I very much I'm a big fan of Strata I've used it twice now and loved it both times um, so yeah this is made by the same people but this is marketed as being like a, a hop for lager now me personally I'm not a massive lager fan I don't particularly like overly carbonated drinks so kind of that's why I'm not into lagers I will drink them every now and again but and brewing wise I've not got a fermentation fridge or anything like that to actually do a lagering process but I'd had them sent to me, I thought well I'm going to use them so I thought I'll put them in a it's a very light pale ale list um, so recipe wise yeah like I say I want it to be low ABV so we've got 3.5 kilogram of low colour golden promise went in there uh, 300 grams of light munich and then just 200 grams of carapels and then hop wise I didn't want to it to be overly bitter or anything like that I mean it's coming out at an IBU of 38 
which yeah you could go a lot lower than that I know can be brewing at like 10 IBUs and whatnot uh, but the majority of my beers at the minute tend to come out at like 50 IBUs so I just thought I'd knock it down a bit make it a bit more easy drinking with it being a lower ABV and like I said specifically made for being able to drink it either all day whether it's when you're doing your garden or if F1's are on or anything like that and you want to start having a few pints at like one two o'clock in the afternoon it's fine you can carry on drinking it even if you've got work next day you're not going to get into much of a tangle with it uh hop wise then so obviously i'd had the iho 33 or lorian hop sent to me but i'd also got some cascade hops left over so the hopping schedule for this one did a hour boil um, but didn't add any hops in until half an hour in uh, at the half hour point I had a 10 grams of cascading and 10 grams of the IHO33. Uh, 10 minutes left to go in the boil, it was 30 grams of IHO33 and 30 grams of cascade. And then did my standard 20 minute hop stand at like 80, 75, 70, 80 degrees kind of temperatures. Uh, and that was, I just have to slide my phone up so I can actually see it. 60 grams of IHO33 and the remaining 50 grams of Cascade that I got left over. Uh, so like I say, yep, come out 38 IBUs and ABV wise 3.9%. Now like I said, IHO33 has been marketed as a hot for lager. Um, and I've been smashing this. It's probably my favourite beer that I've brewed this year so far just for ease of drinking you can easily drink it all day long not really getting fed up for it like some of the beers that I'll brew um, you might have like two or three pints from but after that you're thinking like you might need a bit of a palate cleanser not the case with this one now I can understand why it's been marketed as a lager kind of hop like I said, although I don't do lager and I don't brew lager, this kind of tastes a bit like hybrid to me. So it's in like a middle ground between like a, a pale ale and a lager. Um, it's not like citrusy that's coming off it, but it has got like kind of lagery kind of smell coming off it. And then, taste-wise, it's got a lot of slight floral, but also we've got some cascade in there, so we're getting a bit of the floral. I'd say there's like pear, pear more so than apple. A bit of a pear if you let it go to the side of your tongue, I'm picking up like kind of pear, but obviously everyone's taste buds are different. But as a hop, IHO33, I think it doesn't just have to be a lager hop from what I'm gathering, drinking this standard pale ale. Um, I use Kvike yeast for this one. Now, I brewed this over a month ago. I'm struggling to recall whether I just stuck it on a yeast cake from my previous beer. Can't really remember. By the way, brewed out with Kavai yeast. And beautiful, beautiful beer. And got enough carbonation for me. So like I say, I've brewed that beer. And I've also, uh, in mind with the fact that the weather's getting hotter, I want stuff that are a bit more low ABV so you can drink a bit more of them. Um, and I've just done like a easy drinking bitter. Um, that's literally about 2.7% something like that. Uh, but that's currently in the keg. Uh, it's not ready to try it yet, maybe a week or so. Um, I'll stick another video up basically trying that one. So, other than brewing the beers, 
and being at work i've been at work a lot I've done a few like nine day stretches um so it's really brewing the beer has not really been the problem it's just then thinking have i got time to edit all the footage and things like that uh, real life gets in the way sometimes so yeah i've not been able to get any footage so i decided to brew and not take any footage but other than that what have we done well at the minute I remember as a child going to Linda's farm, which is like a little cotter farm that gets cut off by the tides and whatnot. It's where all the monks used to be. Um, and I remember going there. I have a terrible memory, but I know that I've been there as a small child. And Linda's farm is pretty much famous for the monks brewing mead. So. Uh, we have at the minute some mead brewing so that has been in the demijohn for about six days now uh, very simple recipe I don't really know much about brewing mead uh, watch a few YouTube videos been on Google but it seems pretty simple so in there we have got two jars of this just standard this is from Tesco, about three, three pound fifty or something a bottle. Blossom honey, uh, seven hundred and twenty grams. So two of them have gone in. So about one thousand four hundred and forty grams. And I top my demijohn up to four liters. Uh, kind of hoping if I can just get like three liters out, so like four standard wine bottles of it, then that'll do me for for the price it costs literally maybe seven or eight pound on my honey and then yeast wise i bought like a multi-pack of the lalvin d47s uh quick google kind of said that lots of people have used that for mead with good good results so i got a pack of five of them for about six pound fifty seven pound so yeah nice cheap and cheerful it's literally gonna cost eight pound to hopefully get like four bottles of mead um so yeah that's been bubbling away for about six days now every couple of days uh take the bung off and just agitate it a bit try and degas it and then stuck some yeast nutrients in every couple of days just to keep it going and yeah it's been bubbling away like a gun for six days reckon it'll probably take maybe two three weeks just bubbling away uh, and then we'll get it all properly degassed and into some bottles. I will do a video when it comes to tasting it and we'll see how we've got on with that one. And I've actually got like a couple of bottles of honey left over so I might even do a video showing the entire process. Um, or it might even be, I think they call it melamel, mel I think they call it. Which is when you put um, fruit in the mead as well. And I did actually buy a packet of frozen, it's like a mixed bag from tesco that's got like raspberries blackberries stroke, all kind of stuff in there so i might actually do a melomel -mel with that we'll definitely film a video of that and then other than that um i actually had a delivery today so big box from a bottle um just browsing their website a couple of nights ago and saw a couple of really cheap and cheerful things and i thought yeah may as well give that a go at the price it costs i'll get a go so what have we got in my box brewing sugar three bags of brewing sugar should be another bag in there somewhere Three bags of brewing sugar. We have got a bag of dried slows. Now, slow gin is one of my favourite drinks in the world. Uh, very much down to my granddad. I remember going and visiting my granddad maybe when I was like 15 or so 
and he gave me a taste of this homemade slow gin that he'd made and it was lovely, thick, stuck to your tongue, sweet, I have a sweet tooth, it was incredible and then it wouldn't have been till maybe 15 years later, maybe when I'm like 30, that uh, unfortunately my, my nan died and we went to the wake and then we went back to my granddad's house at which point to produce a bottle and this was the same batch that he'd brewed 15 years previously when I'd had it and it was just incredible so I've always loved slow gin since then so bag of dried slows gonna get myself a bottle of gin in the next few days and hopefully I have that all ready for Christmas I know longer you can leave it the better but it's nice, easy from what I can gather literally damage on, stick your slows in stick some sugar in, stick your gin on top just keep checking it every couple of days Bob's your uncle so we're going to give that one a go and we've got uh, just an auto siphon it's something I've been needing for ages Try and bump it up to get like the free delivery cost. Stuck an auto siphon on there for like nine quid. Perfect. There's the bag of brewing sugar that we've got. So, three bags of brewing sugar. What do I need three bags of brewing sugar for? Well, let's see. We've also got three. These are like. I think the market is like 10.7 litre fermentation buckets and they were like I don't know whether they're on their clearance section but like £2.95 for a bucket bucket and lid um, now I've got some grommets and uh, at some point can't remember what company it were but I bought like two airlocks a couple of years ago and they actually sent me two packs of 10 so I've got 20 airlocks um, so yeah, I'm just going to drill an hole through there, stick my grommet, stick my airlocks in there. So yeah, three bucket, three lids. And whilst I'm on the website, so many years ago I tried to brew some wine. And it didn't turn out well. Uh, at that point I was pretty new to brewing, I'd not really done enough research about brewing wine. And I'd never done any degassing. So at no point did I ever think to degas it or anything like that. And then once it'd been bottled and stuff like that, it was like fizzy red wine. Not good. I think we ended up pretty much just pouring it down the drain. Um, but on the Brew to Bottle website at the minute, they've got some clearance ones on. And these little, little kits where you can do six bottles of wine. Uh, stick a bag of brewing sugar in and then you got like your, your juice and whatnot little additions this one's a chardonnay and then i'm assuming they're all like benzonites and whatnot clearing agents and fining agents and whatnot um <coughs> but these kits they're currently on the brew to bottle website some are £4.95 and some are £5.95 which it's not even the price of buying a bottle of wine from a supermarket so I thought I may as well give it a go even with price of bucket and price of brewing sugar it's costing about £8, £8-£9 which is literally like the price that I spend on a bottle of wine in Tesco anyway so I thought I may as well give it a go, I've got nothing to lose so I got a bottle of, well, a box of Chardonnay, so hopefully brew six bottles of Chardonnay with that one. And I'm sure you're already ahead of me, but I bought three buckets. That's because we've got a Salmon Grundy, the peach wine. Um, yeah, we'll see how that one goes. I've never had peach wine before. But we'll give it a try. And then somewhere in my box there should be another one. Yeah, <laughs> and then this one is a Zinfandel rosé wine. 
Now these claim that you can drink them in seven days. Make six bottles ready in seven days. I'm not going to be in seven days. I think we all know that that's just a big marketing scam, you know. You're not brewing a wine that's ready to be drunk in seven days. I'm not going to rush it. Um, so I'll probably get it a couple of weeks and ferment it. And then I'll probably get it a few weeks in the bottle. I'm not going to be trying to see whether it's true that you can be ready to drink in seven days. I don't believe it. So we're not going to go with that. Also, uh, this for about £3. So white grit white grape juice concentrate um, and basically that's to add to, to the cheap wine kits just to add a bit of body to it a bit of flavour to it so that pack there I'm thinking I'll probably split it between the Chardonnay and the Rosé or I might stick with one in peach I've not made my mind up but yeah I thought for three quid extra £1.50 each kit We'll give it a whirl, it can't do any harm. And some wine corks, because I bought the very cheap, no idea whether this is going to work. £2.95 though, and this is basically so the bottles of wine that I've been buying from Tesco, keep hold of them ones, then I can fill the bottles up with my new wine sit my cork in my corker hopefully as easy as I should put a cork in the bottle like I say I've never tried it before so it's all be a learning experience and I will make sure that I make a video of that one so we can all have a good laugh at me and then for that extra bit of class little shrink wraps so yeah little gold shrink wraps so you can put all the top of it make them look a bit more professional than the £8 for six bottles of wine that they're actually going to be. Uh, also got myself another bung because I've actually got two of these demijohns but I've lost the bung for one. So another bung so I can get like two lots of mead or a lot of slow gin going on. Got my bung there. Uh, what else to buy? So you forgot what I bought, I just carried on, carried on clicking things. Uh, but different things in regards to like wine making and mead making, so pectolase, uh, you kind of put that in with your fruit, it kind of breaks the skins down and stuff, releases all the juices from, if I remember right. Oh, we're no good at chemistry at school, so now we've got like sodium metabisulfate, potassium sorbate, malic acid. Can't remember why I bought them, I'll Google it, there must be a reason, I've read about them. So I'll find out why. I wanted some citric acid, I think, but they sold out for it at Bruno Bottle. But yeah, malic acid, I definitely read about in mead making, but I'll do some more research, find out why on earth I bought these things. They will come in useful at some point. They will probably last a lifetime. Uh, I think one kills fermentation, possibly a mixture of both of them kind of kills it. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments, but I think you use them to like kill fermentation if you want to back sweeten your mead, because obviously all the yeast is going to eat all the sugar, so it might make it a bit too dry. I have a sweet tooth. I think this first batch I'm just going to leave as normal, see what it tastes like, but then in future I might want to back sweeten it, so once it's finished fermenting you can stick some of this in and then it will stop it fermenting so if you put any more sugars in instead of the yeast eating it the yeast are now dead so they don't eat it and it leaves you with a sweeter drink teaching you all how to suck apples I'm pretty sure you already know that suck apples suck eggs whatever so yeah a little shopping spree and like i say i'll hopefully i'll make two or three videos of that maybe like the slow gin and one of the wine kits or whatnot uh but yeah that's pretty much me like i said done a day in the garden so it's just time to chill out it's gone a bit cloudy now but it's still nice and warm so yeah drink the 3.9 percent beer have a nice little chill that evening so until next time everybody see you later